top of this feature now. Woohoo! Looks like a hemichorallium skeleton to the right, but oh, a big anemone. Yeah, let's look at the it's anemone. Huge anemone. You want to zoom on it? Yeah, oh, wow. sure. Oh, and a big black coral, too. Oh, and a little cup coral. Hmm. My gosh. Go That's ahead, a zoom. stocked crinoid. A couple of them. What's yeah. this? Um, that looks like an umbellopathies to the right, but oh, this yeah. is a huge anemone. Nice. <laughs> Sorry, this made me think of another SpongeBob reference. Oh, gosh. <laughs> that one episode where... Uh, All right, Gary good here, in. thank you. Gary walked okay. in on Spongebob well, watching an enemy and on TV. A, did you want a coral next um, to it? No, I think I'm pretty sure that that's an umbellopathy. Sorry, Daniel. Um, You're good. I'm trying to think if there's anything else we want on. Maybe this cup coral here. Okay. Just for fun. Go ahead and zoom. Yeah, you can keep the ship going. You can do 50 mm. meter moves now if you like. Sounds great. Yeah, so that's small right behind so it. So little. Yeah. It's, yep. Mm-hmm. Little cup coral. Yeah, cute. Th so these are hard corals, um, but they're just little. <laughs> one big polyp. One big animal. All right, we're good here. Thank you. Do they always stay that size, or can they get any bigger? Um, I'm not sure. I'm. I would assume that that's quite big. Yeah, that looks large compared to some of them that we yeah. see. Yeah. Um. But that's whoa! A big feather, huh? Look at this! Huge. Oh my gosh, that's beautiful. Yes, please. Go ahead. You said this might be a black coral. Um. That. So this one, I'm pretty sure, is a black coral. Um, what specifically? I'm not sure, or it might just be a rock pen. But I'm pretty sure it's this one. It's a staropathies, I think. Or actually, no, that branching pattern looks a little different. Wow, look at those. The polyps are facing downwards. That's quite cool. It might just be a bathopathies, but like orange. Um, but let's just go with black coral for now, I think. I think that's a good good guess. Yeah. Yeah. Really beautiful. Thank you. And this is like huge. Um, so those lasers are 10 centimeters, so I would think that this is like couple yeah, meters it's yeah um can't quite see it from atalanta's view but i'm sure it's like as tall if not taller than herc which is incredible for these depths Yeah, so much life. Oh, and some sort of windmill looking black coral here. Huh. It does look like a windmill. Huh. Yeah. Huh. No, no need to zoom though. I think it's pretty distinct. Oh, I mean, um, yeah, I think that's actually a bamboo. Kind of interesting. Mm-hmm. Are there bamboo corals that just have those distinct branches like that? Like um, typically? Yeah. Or maybe primnoids? So uh, I need to pull up the other guide. But yeah, so the way that um, bamboo corals are recognized usually is that they have these black bands um, on their branch or on their um, stem, I guess and they look like bamboo, hence the name. Primnoids are kind of, the way I distinguish primnoids from other things is the way their polyps are facing usually. They're kind of like super dense. Um, their polyps are like parallel with each other. Um, yeah. Wow. 
I really cannot believe how much we're seeing. Yeah. The whole face is just covered down to yeah. the Yeah, so many corals and crinoids now too. It's about to flatten off a little bit as we rise yeah. up this ridge. Yeah. yeah. So Dwight, after this dive, when is our next one planned? Uh, we hope to launch again at midnight tonight. And that'll be on the next seamounts to our south, site seven, and it'll just be a shallow dive to the summit. And crisscross over some interesting little mound and channel features. Cool. And how long is that one supposed to be? Maybe like 15 hours or so? Um, I estimated 14. Uh, it's tough to predict. Um, it might only be 12. And when you make those estimates, you're just predicting a max time spent down there? Oh, there's lots of <laughs> factors that weigh into it. Um, it's trying to optimize our efficiency with launches and recoveries, mapping, and getting to all the sites before the end of the cruise. Um, Oh, yeah, that's big. That's a, yeah, let's take a closer let's look, look at, at this that. one if we're able. Sure, yep. If we're doing shallow dives, we usually don't have to spend as much time. This dive took a little longer than planned. Uh, we went about four hours later. Yeah, we're um, seeing so much stuff. Yeah, because it just ahead, progressed zoom. at a slower rate because we were zooming and sampling so much. Which is a good thing. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so, uh -huh. yeah, so this is a huge primnoid, potential, potentially Norella, but the way. Crinoid I, on the back of it. Yeah. I think we've seen that crinoid a couple times. Um, ooh, and a beautiful Lots of little cam. brittle stars, huh? They're all over. Yeah. yeah. Um, and there's a paramoresid at the bottom there, too. But yeah, huge, or I mean, I think I, wait, I might have misspoke. Yeah, this is definitely a Calyptrophora. Competing with each other. From Noah, sorry. But, um, huge. And kind of looks like there's some coralivorous jellies on it or something. Yeah, oh yeah, there's a bamboo right next to it. You can really see the difference in their polyps here. Oh yeah, this one? Yep, mm -hmm, the longer one. Boy, they're close oh, together. Wow. Yeah, they're fighting, I guess. <laughs> I guess the current is just really good here. <laughs> um, can't quite see the banding on this bamboo, yeah. but... I can try and zoom in a little bit more. No, it's all right. Um, good enough to just know that it's a bamboo coral. But I think we're good here. Thank you. Okay. But yeah, corals are a great example of an ecosystem engineer because they create these huge habitats for other species to aggregate on. Um, like we saw those crinoids, those feather stars, kind of just chilling on top of it for additional um, height so they can catch more food, I guess. And then when they die, that that can still be colonized for, um, you know, even more benefit. But also, wow. Pink coral. Yeah. Oh, I um, see that big one in the back. Let's look at it if we're able. Paragorgia. Yeah. Either that or hemichorallium. That was the debate we were having. And a purple one behind it, too. Yep. Got a very colorful garden here. Yeah. That's all right. Oh, I meant the the pink, the pink one. one. But you went over oh, it. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> it's all uh, good. But if, if you want to look at a few here, we should probably stop the ship. Um, We're kind of out behind. You know what? It's actually I do want to look at this. Um, after after this paragorgia or hemichorallium. 
Thank you for adjusting that. Yeah, so. Go ahead and zoom. Man, we have a bunch of stuff on this. So cup coral in the background. We have a crinoid on top. Um, looks super knobbly. I think that's a Paragorgia. Um, I can't tell if it's like really waving or not, but Paragorgia with some sort of maybe hydrozoan growing on it. That like kind of stuff. Yeah, the kind of not pink stuff. <laughs> Took over one stalk. Yeah. Huh. Looks like a mix of the pink, but also yellow. Are those spots that are, like you said, being taken over by something else, or? Yeah, most likely. Most likely getting. So it wouldn't be like a piece of it that's like dying or dead, like a sick tree branch or something. Um. Yeah. I had a shrimp in there too. Yeah. Um. I think we're good. Oh, and then there's something. It's kind of not completely. Maybe a hard. Coral. That's what Actually, it looks like. that looks. What's this? That's a. Um, I think I think they said a mollusk. Predatory mollusk, but um. Yeah, I think at the bottom that's actually a hard coral. I don't know what. One. There's so much going on here. Yeah. And a worm over to the top right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. I think we're good here. I do want to look at that. Um, there was one to the right that looks like it was being kind of eaten or taken over. This one. Do the crinoids that sit on those corals, do they ever jump off and swim? Yes. Mm -hmm. oh, they can. So yeah, those, they have little, um, I don't know the proper term for it, but they have those little attachment leg branches things and they can spring off and use their arms to like swim and it's really pretty go ahead and zoom and oh. come down five meters on atalanta yeah so this looks like another black coral being colonized by yeah. hydrozoans i think um, yeah they're totally they're taken over. everywhere, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure they're hydrozoans. Wow. That's awesome. Oh my gosh, and look at the background too. Yeah. Wow. Look at this whole cluster. I know, yeah. It's, uh, so much going on. But I think spend we're... all day here. Yeah, I think we're good here, thank it's you. It's a whole garden. Yeah, We oh already did all our Niskins? Yeah, yeah we <laughs> did. This would be such a good place though. Yeah, it's saying, well, we have one, but this is not available. So. I know. Well, there's plenty more to look at. We still have a little ways to go upslope, so I think we should keep going. Yeah, right. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Great view. That is awesome. It's so cool. I think this... I think this is the most samples we've had so far. Probably. There, we've at, seen a lot on this dive. We're at 19. <gasps> oh my big. gosh. Yeah. That's a lot. That's going to be fun in a wet lab. Yeah. Yeah, really, that's one way to put it. And I think most of them are like corals and stuff. Uh, yeah, it looks like we're seeing a lot of corals here. Um, some sponges, not really. I um, only have four rocks. Not even a lot of like stars, like no, like not very many sea stars that I'm seeing, just corals everywhere. Huh, it seems like the slope actually is going down a little bit here. Is that true? Uh, it's supposed to keep going up. It's kind of just lumpy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's a, is there a little fish to the side? Um, yeah, looks like a halosaur. Because it's so slender. It's got that funny kind of mouth. Yeah, yeah that halosaur. little. Mm hmm. I think that's a halosaur. Cheyenne, can you calculate um, how long it will take us to ascend? Yeah, it's saying about 80 minutes. Okay. Um,
using 17 as an average, I know we're kind of heavy with all the samples. Wow, this is great. So something I always like to think about when looking at these corals is how much they look like snacks. So I think that the bubblegum looking corals look like bubblegum. You said it looks like snacks? Yeah. So, <laughs> like, <laughs> so I was okay. thinking what did the feather crinoids look like? Like strips of, like, don't exactly look like it, but strips of... Uh, Beef jerky, almost. <laughs> I, <laughs> some of them maybe. Mm -hmm. I don't know how I would classify these corals as snacks. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. And the primnoids are like, like giant strips of uh, dried coconut, <laughs> and the um, yellow corals are like McDonald's fries. I can see that. I can see the yellow <laughs> corals looking. Oh my gosh, another huge rock pen. Um, we don't necessarily need to look at it, but that is ginormous. That one looks like a pork rind. <laughs> I would have said ostrich feather, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I was say, that looks like a stereotypical, like, quill pen. Um, yeah. Man. Maybe my choice of snacks don't sound the healthiest, but <laughs> they do. That, that's what it reminds me of. I mean, especially. I you just had you know. lunch. You're not hungry, are you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm full, but, you know, a, a snack here and there doesn't hurt. <laughs> Especially the um, brittle stars when they're curled around the corals. They look exactly like curly fries. Like, just fresh out the fryer. Just oh, a big, big anemone. Wow. I prefer curly fries over any fries. Mm. Even know. more than sweet potato fries. Oh, love oh, sweet yeah. potato yeah. fries. Yeah, definitely over sweet potato fries. Those are disgusting. Uh, I'm no. Sorry. I'm sorry. Those are nice. Maybe <laughs> with some like chipotle. Yeah, I don't like sweet potatoes. <laughs> Man, can we look at this? I, I will say reaction. I'm a pretty I'm a pretty picky eater, so I don't eat a lot of things. That's fair. I think we saw this type before. I just want to check. Definitely looks urchin-like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> go ahead and zoom. Oh yeah, so a type of echinotheroid, echinotheroid. Um, Oh, like a pin cushion. Yeah, looks pretty. <laughs> I would say pretty. Ooh, oh, wow. Hey. What is that? Is that oh, a polychaete. 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 Yeah. yeah, love polychaetes. Oh, lovely. Um, yeah, so oh, this one is okay. definitely a spur sparasoma. Mm -hmm. I'll type that in the chat for yeah, you, Loopy. Please, and, thank and then you. there's a cup coral right next to it and some paramaresid in the background. But I think we're good here. Thanks. Okay. Can you tell me if I spelled this right, Sarah? Polykey. Um, poly. So, uh, it's C H A E. Looks like some uh, big stuff back here. C H A T E. Correct. Okay. Or well, well, okay. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot an extra e, but it's all right. Don't yeah. know what you mean. Yep. Thank wow, you. Wow, this is a cool little knob here. Ooh. Oh, can we look at this? I think that's just another crinoid, but pretty color. Kind of can't. Actually, that's a sea star, I think. Yeah, I think you're right. Go ahead and zoom. Hmm. All spread out. Hmm. Ooh. Ah. Sarah, you ran a fast manifested it when you said there's no sea stars out here. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that's so pretty. Look at those purple spines. Um, what is it? This is a, a just a sea star, yeah. You sure? Oh. Uh, it looks like it's got some doesn't have actually, much of a wait, center Actually, no, yeah, no, 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 just kidding. It's a, it's, a, it's a feather star, sorry. See the back yeah. protrusions? Oh my gosh, there's just so much to look at. Okay, um, I think we're 
good in terms of zoom here. Thank you. Yep. It's so pretty. And they have 10 arms, meaning oh, that. Oh, we got a red little critter up above. Oh, yeah. Shrimp. Wanna I'm zoom assuming. In? I, well, it's, and a shrimp. it's a shrimp. <laughs> I can see those two eyeballs. Beady eyes. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting rock formation. Hmm. Looks like a set of lips. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like fish lips. See, it's not just Squid me lips. who makes <laughs> who looks makes rock look like things. I tried to I tried to convince them that these rocks looked like a beaver last night, <laughs> but could not see it. I no one saw no. it except for me, and I'm gonna take a picture next time, and I'm gonna draw it. Yeah, this is a beautiful. Um, Yellow coral. Yeah. Do you want to <laughs> zoom there? <laughs> um, no, we're okay. The McDonald's fries. Oh, it looks corals. like a yellow plexurid next to it, actually. Or, um, oh my god, what they were renamed to? <laughs> Daniel, I just Herb read your said. highlight description. <laughs> <laughs> so our last watch, we didn't really see any of these like <laughs> greenish ones. <laughs> greenish ones? Do you mean the ones that have yellow polyps and like whiter? Yeah, it Branch? just kind of looks Branching? more green, yeah. I guess, on the camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So they're definitely two different things. Oh my gosh, I have so many tabs open. How much, what's our distance to the final waypoint, Cheyenne? Oh. Whoa. Do, do, uh, 330 Bath meters. Ooh, it's yeah. farther than I think we can get, huh? Yeah. Umbelula. I mean, Umbella Day. I mean, Umbella Pathies. Wow. Um, that's an Umbelula to the right, but I don't think we need to zoom. So we are going at point two knots. We could try like no zooms and going at like point three knots or point four knots, just to hit the next waypoint. Yeah. Um, up to the pilots, I guess. You can, um, you can still do zooms at point three. Yeah. You okay. can go at point five and zoom by everything, but point three is okay. Okay. Yeah, let's do try short that. ones. That sounds good. Yeah, so paramarisids, potentially a canthus. Orchids, potentially, but um, we haven't really seen them. We're kind of out of the depth range for most, so I'm not sure. Like, didn't really get a close up of the polyp structure, so I don't know. But really pretty yellow, deep, deep yellow, like mustard yellow corals here. And so many. Um, I want to say they're all primnoids, but I don't know unless we zoom in. But the yellow or the whitish? the whitish ones are most likely primnoids, but not sure. Um, we don't need to zoom in, but just making an, a guess, a big guess. So I was looking up some info about that worm we found, and. Mm -hmm. It, they're really interesting. People in the chat were also telling us about it. Mm. So they swim, but they're also neutrally buoyant, so you just find them just floating around mostly. Wow. But they also have bioluminescent gills that can be cast off, or like they can shed those gills and Whoa. kind of as a defense mechanism. Oh, wow. That's really cool. I love polychaetes. Any of the... Any of the colorful wiggly things that we see swimming or sliding like um nudibranx love them it's another urchin oh yeah another sparasoma man this is just you spend all day here sarah yeah mm -hmm. you really could <laughs> <laughs> and i'm sure that if we zoomed in we would see a million more wow. things Look at that one. That's just, oh yeah, oh really yeah. big sea whip. Whoa, man. 
That's gotta be multiple meters. <laughs> But things are doing really well out here, which is great, yeah. great to see. Yeah, it'll be interesting. The next dive will be at a similar depth range up on top of the next geo. Yeah. So uh, we can compare. Oh, another Aritagorgia, I think Bella. Coming up, huge spiral with a puff on top. Oh, actually, no, those are crinoids. Oh, yeah. I think it's a dead one with stuff colonizing it. Basket star? Yep. Take a look at Yeah, we can. It's that, um, that tree variety, tree root looking one, which is a gorg. Okay, hold on. Gorgonocephalid, I think maybe. I'll type that in the chat. Looks like a deep sea sunflower. Go ahead, zoom. Ooh, and an and a anemone, a flytrap anemone, on this dead Aritagorgia. Yep, that's a Gorgonocephalid. Yep. For sure. Wild. Yeah, so pretty. Wow. Almost looks like something out of a, a fairy tale. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah. I know. Huh. Or well. stars falling off. I love how they're little coils. Yeah, yeah it's like yeah. little coils on the. On they're the trying fern. to hold on to nothing. All right, we're good here. Oh, and it looks like some sort of. I oh know that's just a brittle star. An enemy there. Mm-hmm. Another couple Devouring in the background. Devouring it, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I really have no idea what could have eaten it, but um, it looks very dead to me, so could be whatever ate it could be long gone. Who knows? So when it comes to the ones that are alive, Ooh. what defense mechanisms do they have? Can we have? maybe look at, I don't know if we're able to, but the, that, there's like stuff on it. What did you ask, Daniel? I'm sorry. Um, what are the defense mechanisms that um, alive Go ahead have? And zoom. To prevent so things from, like, you know, growing other. on them and consuming them. Yeah, so, oh, I think they're just brittle, brittle stars. stars. yeah. Yep, okay, just kidding. Um, and a, right. we're also oh, central on an umbellopathies. Um, so corals can secrete toxins. Um, they're generally kind of, they have, they're kind of, some of them can be super hard, so hard to eat. Um, but yeah, a lot of toxins mainly, and they're also part of the um, cnidarian phylum. So that means that they also have cnidocytes, or those, um, they're like, they're like, I don't know, like harpoon looking things. It's what stings you when you touch a jellyfish. Um, so those can be really damaging to anything trying to eat it. But yeah, toxins and cnidocytes primarily, I think. Yeah. Man. Now it's flattening out and you're not seeing as much. Yep. yep. Interesting. Oh, that's what I was looking for earlier. Yep. There was a type of rock pen we were seeing a lot that I just couldn't remember what it was, but it was definitely a scler scleroptilid. 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 <laughs> now I know. Um, we haven't really been seeing them now, but there were a lot of them 12 hours ago. Oh, and actually, I think I might see... Nope, just kidding. Oh. Um, can you reseed the DVL down there? Yep. Yeah. Oh, can we look at this? If sure. we're able? Yep. 
I think that's a sponge. Can't quite tell from this distance. Hey, Sarah, do you think you can help me out with this question right here? Why don't you let me drop the cursor? <laughs> um, yellow green swimming organism in front of the coral two minutes. Go ahead and zoom. Um, yellow green swimming organism. Ooh, that's a, um, sorry, let me look at the thing that we're looking at right now first. Mm -hmm. Is this a sponge? Yes, this is a glass sponge. Um, very ornate. Yeah, really pretty. Can't quite That's remember a, what it is right now. Looks like a really tiny anemone back there, and a brittle star. All right, um, this is a good enough zoom. Thank you. Okay, I believe this is a foraid of some sort. Yeah, this is a foraid of some sort. Really pretty. Um, yellow, th yellow. Green swimming. I think it was the worm we saw. Was earlier. it the worm? Yeah, yeah, I was about to say. What? What? Did you find out what that was called? I believe it's this here. Oh, Acrocerida? Mm -hmm. Swima? Swima. <laughs> um, the genus is Swima, S W I M A. The bridge wasn't happy going faster? No. Okay. Well, we're. We only have about 10 minutes left anyway. And yeah, we can just keep I moving. do want to look for a final rock sample. All right. You want to wanna pick it? Me? No. You <laughs> pick it. It's your rock. <laughs> I got you, Dwight. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel can pick it. Yeah. yeah. Did you just order a move in? Yeah, you want to strike the move there? Oh. So this looks like a... Yeah, this looks like a sample-friendly area. Yeah. Woohoo! Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, Cheyenne. <laughs> uh, let's see. <laughs> Angular... If possible, they're all pretty smoothed over, aren't they? Yeah. This one, maybe? Is that too big? Yeah, I was looking at that one, too. The one in the sand. Were you really? That's huge. Uh, yeah, pretty big. Um, <laughs> maybe something a little smaller. Anything around here? They're all too circular. That one. Might be good, eh? Oh. Oh, yeah. Looks like it's got Oops. some kind of coral on it, too. What do you think, Daniel? The one the lasers are on? Uh, it looks like it could be attached to another rock underneath the substrate, but it's worth checking out. That's Why it. not? Do you want the... Actually, here's, this here's one. one that might be kind of easy. Did you point at that one that the lasers are on now? That one is the one that he Different just pointed one. out. Okay. Yep. Just. Yeah. Man, look at all these. We'll get a maybe corals. we'll get a coral sample with it. Nope. Nah. As I say, we have so many corals. I know. <laughs> yeah. Do we figure out a place to put it? Um, I'm trying to think. I feel like it might be able to go if that. I think it can go in line. with another rock as long as we know it's on top or. Yeah. At least distinct enough from it. If it does go with another rock, um, maybe see that one said a small rock. So um, if we're looking a little farther south, like in the lower right hand corner, it looks like there's like some like two rocks that look like a decent size. I'm not sure. They look too smooth, but what about Oh yeah, I kind of have them on the still cam if you want to look. I don't have all of them, but... Yeah, like those right there, they, they look pretty smooth, but These? I'm not sure. No, right above that. Nope. Nope. You were just there. So go back to that rock. What rock? I think this, <laughs> I think this one's oh, fine, oh. if you can These, get it. I see. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Maybe. Oh. 
Looks like it's attached yeah. to something else. Yeah. Try those two next to it. Yeah. I think they're attached. Yeah. <laughs> Bummer. Man. Um. Yeah, that's all. Okay. Yuna rock. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you want to drive around again? Yeah. So much stuff in this still cam, though. Cup coral. Um, likely a paramarisid that broke off recently. Sea whip. Umbellopathies. Victagorgia in the far distance. A rock pen again. So much stuff. Nice image. Yeah. Now that we have our camera functional, um, or more functional, it's really awesome to see everything. Is Argus and Atalanta in front of you? Yeah, or? it is. Yeah. All right, if you want to go up underneath, uh, we can take another look around once you get there. Sure. Let me see. Maybe Hercules. Any of those in there? Mm. Looks like it could be loose. Tough to get to, though. Tough, There's tough. the one in the middle. This, uh, this guy? I was looking at a different one, but... That's what I was saying. Oh, no, that's probably attached. Oh, no, they all look attached now to them here. Yeah. Yeah. Don't, uh, yeah, why don't you try another spot? Squat good. lobster! We don't need to zoom, but... Squat lobster! Ooh, you can really see the banding on this bamboo coral coming up. Um, even without a zoom, you can Whoa. see it. Oh, wow. Big one. Big one. The ultimate pipe cleaner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Truly. Yeah, a lot of these rocks just look attached right here. Man. I'll try it to before. How about over here? Perhaps. So hard to tell. They look loose to me, but. <laughs> you never know until you try. Um, someone asked, have we seen a Chonocops yet? Not to my knowledge on this dive, but on this expedition, yes. We also saw some other anglerfish too. The gray variety, which I forget the name of. Chonocops are anglerfish, is that what you're referring yes. to? Yes, Chonocops is the genus, the genus name. Yeah. They are anglerfish, and they do have the little dangly um, lore I was things. wondering about that myself, like if we've come across any of those. Mm -hmm. Given that this is the deep ocean. I think there are a lot of things we came across that are bioluminescent, but our lights are too bright for them. Oh, oh pictagonid! Oh, wow. Oh, wait. Oh, what? It's a decorator. Yeah, it's a oh decorator crab! Decorator crab. So cute. Moving so these? Very fast. Yes. These are in the same. Um, they're, they're also they're hermit crabs. Yeah, you can see the anemone on there. Yeah, it's so cool. Love it. Probably attached. What do you think? I think they're all attached. Yeah. Oh man. Full wide. <laughs> You're just grabbing onto <laughs> it. <laughs> Sorry. You're like, who's got the bigger claw now? <laughs> it's a really smooth rock. Yeah. Super smooth. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um. No luck. Yeah, they <laughs> all look pretty. <laughs> One of you, lift up. <laughs> no. Hercules needs like a little rock cutter. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my oh god, no. the hermit crab is trying to fight. Oh, 
Oh. Come to the snow camp. <laughs> He's hey, like, bud. who's got the big meaty claws now? Oh, it's just looking at us. All right, let's us. Uh, maybe rise up, take one more look around, and maybe yep, make one ya. final attempt before uh, heading to the surface. Oh, wow. <laughs> just looking at us. Oh, that's a perfect picture there. Yeah, that <laughs> is a nice picture. Oh, did it eject? No, it didn't. Did it? No. I hope it didn't. Kind of looks like the anemone on its back was ejected. Our bad. And maybe something in here? Yeah. Um. don't know what type of I mean there is only one <coughs> that's a weirdo um. <coughs> I actually that might attached to me now yeah as you get closer yeah. want to go for it yeah one last try and then that's an a for effort so i believe that actually was a true crab not a hermit crab mm -hmm. here's a picture over here homoliday yeah long gear yeah i'm not gonna i'm not sure if that i mean looks quite similar yeah, I'm just gonna put the genus in the in the chat. But yeah, real crab. I don't think we've seen that yet on this. Maybe on this maybe expedition. This one? Good try. I think we got to get going. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so that crab is a carrier crab. And I thought it was ejecting the urchin, but it was actually just holding it with its back legs. No more Niskins, right? No. Um, All right. I guess Niskin We're good is to not working. Get out of here, you guys. All nice right. dive. That was an A for effort, not <laughs> effort. You ever wonder why, instead of giving out Fs, they don't give out Es? It's like A, B, C, D, and then F, not E, F. Some places do E. Really? Yeah, I think some places in Europe. Hmm. Well, when every time um, in elementary, I would get an E, and it was like more so like ex uh, excellent. <laughs> yeah, there's like a different grading yeah. system. Uh, come up a little on Atlanta. Man. Yeah, we saw a lot. That's awesome. Okay, hold there.
So it looks like we're about to begin our ascent to the top. Are we mm -hmm. looking? All right. Yep. Yep. Blue water. Woohoo! Well, shark. <laughs> Manifesting. So what equipment on board Hercules allows the ROV to ascend and descend? Wh what are those instruments or what are those things called? Thrusters. Yep. There's two vertical thrusters on Hercules. And there's, so they allow it to go up and down. And there's two more that allow it to go forward and backward and turn. And there's two more that allow it to just drive sideways. Nice. And does the RV also include ballast tanks? No ballast tanks. What we what we do and what most ROVs do is you have all the buoyancy on top, the big yellow block. Mm -hmm. so makes it float ball. and you have more than you need. And um, and then you kind of trim it with some weight on the sub. So then you can, that way you can add and remove tools uh, or science instruments. So you can just take your lead off and put the equivalent amount on for your instrument. And you can also trim the vehicle to have it, you know, perfectly balanced or dip down a little bit in the front or whatnot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I even saw in uh, Atlanta that there's some uh, bricks nailed to the frame, so <laughs> I guess that helps too. Yeah, exactly. For Atalanta, that's to just actually make it heavier so that it uh, <coughs> is, uh, helps with it uh, heaving up and down. Okay, uh, start coming up at 15 meters per minute. 15, all right. Is it me, or are y'all hearing music too? They're doing an interaction behind us, maybe that, or? Oh, okay, yeah. I just hear music, that's so I'm like, is it just me, or am I just <laughs> hearing like rock and roll music going on? Rock and roll, there was. All right, yeah. all right. sorry guys. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. Uh, so if you wanna listen or not listen, there's a switch on your thing called blue. Huh? Really? Real? Oh, is that the Bluetooth one? <laughs> say STU? Or is it something else? I mean, it's fine. It was just funny. I just started hearing music. <laughs> oh, I hear it now. I was going to say, I'm just listening to uh, music in my head, but I don't think that's the same. Okay, it looks like we can do 19 meters per minute no, it's, on the winch. No, it's nice. So, Amber, you have an important role here on the ship with our uh, video feeds. Uh, can you tell us about your job and your path to getting to where you are here on the Nautilus? Sure, uh, so my role here on the Nautilus is to kind of uh, ensure that all the recordings are going well, that all the, the shipboard cameras are uh, streaming where they need to go, and, and then on the dives, uh, assisting with the pilots with uh, the zoom focus and uh, iris, and as well as the color shading, uh, and then for our deliverables, we're also making sure all the metadata is getting connected uh, to the video files so that scientists can uh, reference those later. And my path to get here is I actually uh, had a background in, in film already, in film and production, and then went and studied oceanography over at the University of Washington uh, for oceanography and ocean technology. And that's when I learned about the Nautilus, and it was just like, how perfect, my two greatest <laughs> loves. And now I get to do them together and it's just, it's the best. That's awesome. Yeah, that's so awesome. Yeah, I feel like in another life, if I was choosing a career path, I think videography and uh, filmmaking would definitely be one. I love movies and getting to really sit there, watch them, analyze them. It's really fun. I took a, um, a gen ed actually this my last semester um, called Imaginary Cities, and it was about um, how urban spaces are portrayed in movies, and that was really, really cool. Yep,
deploying of architecture yeah, and, and some of the, the new ways that they're doing that for example uh, some of the Star Wars or Mandalorian mm -hmm. uh, rather than doing full CG for their sets they'll, they'll actually have like really fine uh, pixeled LED walls that mm -hmm. they'll project the image on and how hmm. neat that they can yeah. do wow. that. Wow. It looks really real too. It does because then you have more leverage with your you know your lighting and your set on like foreground elements and very uh, great use of technology for the arts. Yeah. This technology is always developing. Right. That's what I like to see. It's a blend of uh, different technologies and techniques to make art instead of it just being one singular method to make things. Like everybody was super afraid when digital became uh, like on the mainstream that would just completely kill film. But we see nowadays that it's, uh, both are used in different capacities and for uh, different storytelling. So it all depends on what you want to do. And even the work that we do here on uh, Nautilus, uh, the cameras in their own way are a way of filmmaking. Uh, it's a very raw live feed and that has its own aesthetic to it. So people who are watching some of them may be artists and filmmakers themselves who may be studying our cameras for whatever project they're doing. Right. Awesome. And, uh, you know, we all kind of work together to you know, in inform and inspire the public about our oceans. So. Exactly. Yep. It's all great work. Public outreach. Yeah, as we ascend, if you have any questions, if you have, if you just want to tell us what your favorite thing is that you saw, feel free to chime in as we watch our blue wall as we ascend and hope that we see something fun on the way up. We must manifest the whale shark. Whale shark. <laughs> <laughs> we'll call it destiny. We'll manifest destiny. <laughs> or hopefully we see Frank again or Francisco yeah, Francisco Francisco Frank I don't think he's around anymore but perhaps another <laughs> who's Francisco someone something you named an oceanic white tip oh yeah <laughs> there was one oceanic white tip do you think it's the same tip. one mm, could be uh, maybe but there was one oceanic white tip that hung out on the same side on the Port side? Oh, yeah. Is that how you say it? Port side? Yeah. Um, for when we were diving, I think, like, the whole time, I want to say. Because I saw, I saw it when we launched, and then towards when we recovered, it was still there. So, so somebody named it Frank, and Oriole named it Francisco? Yeah, yeah I, <laughs> I suggested Frank, and then <laughs> he changed it to Francisco. So it's Just Francisco, but Frank, yeah, you know, for short. <laughs> Dropped. This one? It's been pretty <laughs> steady the whole time. Not just dropped. So, Mike, I have a very important question for you. <laughs> Unless he's Sorry, busy. Go ahead. So, <laughs> the, the people at home are wondering how do you keep your hair so supple? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm not doing anything. I just got off 10 minutes before I came in here. Uh, so, so I really just woke up like that. Yeah, I know that's magic. <laughs> oh, how I could get such a luscious Must be mane. nice. <laughs> yeah, for real. <laughs> Thinking about growing your hair out, Daniel? <laughs> oh, I have. It's uh, not the same. <laughs> Kind of dipping back. I just shut the auto heading thrusters right. off. But okay, so 100 more. But mm -hmm. yeah, that. Yeah. 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 This. I mean, it stayed steady all the way until just now. So.
So how was your watch last night? I, I missed it. I was sleeping. Yeah, it um, it was like off and on, really. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to yeah. think about what we even did. It was <laughs> primarily on. We had our, our sandy bit in the beginning. Yeah. But then it was it was a similar lot. to just As how much steeper, diversity. Yeah. Like. yeah. Yep, a lot of paramaresids, I remember. Um, we saw like a, it was like, we were seeing like large like fan corals and bamboos and oh, right, right. We yeah, got, I we, got up at five thirty and yeah, we you saw guys like were a large, <laughs> um, great. a large crinoid. Yeah, and there was one that Lila was really excited about. Oh the yeah, the sea dandelion. Sea dandelion. Yeah, the sea oh, that's dandelion. right. Actually, I called it a jellyfish. It was a siphonophore. <laughs> My bad. Um, but yeah, really cool stuff. Yeah, one of these. Yeah, they're pretty neat. Mm -hmm. You can see this little siphons on them. Yeah, it was kind of, it looked like this. We didn't really get to see it move a bit, a lot, but, um, and we suspected that there could have been a sea angel. Um, oh yeah? Two sea angels, but we couldn't really get a close up. So yeah, that would have been awesome to see. They're so pretty. But yeah, a lot of cool stuff. This dive has been awesome. And, I mean, this wasn't on our watch, but the, the whale bone, that's great. Yeah, what did that look like? We have um, to pull up the still. <laughs> it looked like the same as what we saw before. Oh, really? There was, yeah, there was a little broken, it like, there was like a quarter of it that was broken off, but hmm. kind of looked very similar. Interesting. Yeah, so can't wait to see what that looks like. Any other questions, Daniel? Uh, yes. So we've got a good one. Has the recent evolution in AI impacted our field research? Imagining the improvement of image recognition that can mm. help with species ID. Hmm. Um, I mean... There's groups that are studying that. Yeah. To my knowledge, not yet. Yep. Welcome. There's, there's efforts underway to start building the databases and creating the uh, for any AI you need to train it so yeah. these databases that are being built are for training purposes to um, for the machine learning process so you build an image database and uh, run video through an algorithm and mm -hmm. uh, have the AI try to identify what it observes in the video yep it's promising for sure but um especially for deep sea stuff it's so hard for even us to tell that it might be really difficult for something like that unless you can get really high definition consistent imagery of um organisms but definitely very cool technology something that could be very helpful in taxonomy and potentially one day the photos and data that we have uh, collected on our expeditions could help with that as well yeah mm -hmm. that library of info So how long can we be out at sea before resupplying? I know for our expedition, I think it's the longest one this season, right? Pretty close. Uh, yeah, that's called the endurance of the ship, I guess, uh, before we need to resupply with water and fuel and uh, food. So 30 days is kind of the, I would say, on the longer end of uh, of the endurance, but um, it could probably go 35, 40 days if you had to. Um, 
Generally, our expeditions are shorter than that, 24, 28 days in that range. Right. Yeah. And this includes, like, uh, supplies like food, fuel, um, like filters for water, etc. We make our own water on board, but mm -hmm. um, they always do top off the, the freshwater tanks. Yep. Oh, a little squishy. I don't know what it is. <laughs> And so while we're not on our watch, we are, we are also able to watch the feed, just as everybody else back online. So we have our TVs in our lounge area where we can uh, watch everybody on our other watches, you know, making discoveries as well. And sometimes we're all just sitting there waiting for something to go by still, so it's always a constant adventure, no matter if you're on a watch or not. We also have comm sets. On, in like different rooms, so yep. we can actually call the live feed when we're not in the control van. Yep. So whenever you hear just a random voice that isn't someone on the watch, that's probably what's happening. Mm -hmm. So when is the last day for this expedition? The 14th? We dock? We, we come, come in back the to port? We come in the morning of the 14th sometime. I'm not sure what time exactly yet. Usually early in the morning. Um, okay. So that means we have a three-day transit, at least three, three and a half. So I think we're leaving. We have to end the last dive or the last mapping bit at the, the evening or nighttime of uh, the third. No, the eleventh. Uh, I think <laughs> I gotta calculate it. <laughs> three days from the fourteenth, the eleventh. Oh, got it. Got it. Actually, maybe it, maybe it's late on the tenth. <coughs> that still gives us like ten more days of good dives. Yep. That all we got is another ten days of ops. Oh, Mike, I think you're muted. Well, we'll if be you we'll be transiting oh, uh, two weeks from today, so we have less than two weeks. Yeah. Maybe we might have twelve. 11 or 12. So we're about the halfway point. Actually, Sunday, Tuesday. I think we passed the halfway Saturday. point. How long have we been out here? Supposed to be tomorrow. Mm. <laughs> Feels a long That's when TJ, <laughs> TJ and Mike swap, swap roles tomorrow. Mm. Wow. So are we going to be getting any more deck faces after tomorrow? Um, Do you question. know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. <laughs> deck faces? The so people on deck to help with the launches and recoveries? No, so oh, no. Oh, faces on no, the, yeah. the I know so what you're talking about. Yeah. Whenever we dive, Mike puts the um yeah, the harness tether thing in a different orientation to make it look like there's two eyes and a mouth. Yeah, now it's kind of a squiggly mouth. Yeah, <laughs> it was a, it I was didn't a. Even know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it I'll was a smile with a um a tongue. a tongue out. Yeah, last I night. I liked that one. It was good, <laughs> but it's really cute. Yeah, I remember you popped up and you saw it and like, wow, this <laughs> is a new face. <laughs> I was so amused. The daily expression. We should just paint it, deck. paint the whole deck to look like the googly eyed squid or something. <laughs> <laughs> a, a mural on deck. <laughs> that might be a little distracting. Yeah. That'd be kind of fun though to have like a mural somewhere, but don't know where. So we'll have about eight hours or so between between dives. Well, more like ten, I guess. And hopefully launch again at midnight. Woohoo! We have to replace a camera on the fan tail on the transom. What vehicle tasks, Michael? Holster, actually. 
holster action. Holster. The the stills camera has to be adjusted, and I think that's it. Was the still camera too far out? It's uh, no, I think it's just tilted down too much. It's picking up some uh, of the porch and all the shots. Yeah, yeah. Oh, gotcha. Just a little bit of a an up and out, a little bit, but they're aware. Yeah. And then um, there might be a little bit of a might need to adjust the input voltage. Uh, from the ship supply, Atlantis. Sarah just noticed this dip down a little bit, and mm -hmm. even right now, it's kind of idling at a hundred. Mm. Should be a bit higher. The tether buoyancy seems okay. This this day. Yeah, I fixed that last time. Just added a bit more lead to it, and also, it might have been. Well, I don't want to. Uh, <laughs> there was the. I did put a bit more lead. It does seem to have made a difference, but it might have been a bit, little bit of operator error too, because everybody was kind of running the same delta. But that that tether is actually longer right. than the previous one, so I like I don't see anything wrong with it. Hmm. Yeah, so we're looking Not pretty good here today. Yep, and the weather seems okay for now. It might kick up on us in the next couple of days, so we're watching that. Um, pretty happy that we got all these deep dives in. The last three dives or so have been pretty deep, so we got that yeah. accomplished. Next dive, we'll have the laser dive bot back on the vehicle. Woohoo! So that's another task when it comes up on deck. So even though our live stream is uh, coming close to an end on this dive, you can uh, always tune in back us with us later for our next dive at 12 a.m. And in the meantime, you can also check out others who are around the world in different organizations who are also doing expeditions right now. The Northwest Pacific Deep Sea Exploration Project is a project by the Ocean Networks Canada, and they are currently doing dives out in the Northeast Pacific Ocean. Ooh, it's awesome. Yeah, you can also check them out live on their website as well. I wish we could watch, but how long is the expedition again? That's a good question. Yeah, it's worth uh, checking out their website as well. They are also one of um, OET's partners. Woohoo! Are they out right now? Looks uh, like it. I don't think so. Don't We're think going. They're yet. going out with us after this expedition. But they could be out right now with somebody else. I just find that a lot. I don't know. Hmm. Well, they will be out. <laughs> they will be out, for sure. The Okeanos Explorer will be up in Alaskan waters. Well, they're up in Alaskan waters now. They're in Dutch Harbor. They'll be doing some mapping in June, and then ROV dives in July and August. Weather permitting. Alaska can be challenging. Yeah. Um, there's also another expedition happening that I've been following somewhat. Um, I'm not sure if I'm saying this correctly, but the Hokulea um, crew, it's a group of Polynesian focused, it's a Polynesian focused expedition and they're starting from Alaska and I think they're going kind of everywhere. I think they're just going like straight south to like Chile or something like that, but they're, they're on their expedition now, I believe. And that's for oceanography or something else? So, um, not quite sure. Let me see if I can get more information.
This internet really kills me sometimes. Sometimes these websites are just too complicated for our bandwidth. <laughs> Yeah, it's been a bit slow lately. We were challenged by being on a different satellite beam, I think. Oh. It hasn't been perfect. Sad. That's all right. But these websites are getting more and more complex and more yeah. and more video and Needs more image oriented. More internet to load. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of wish they had, you know, how they have like a version like a built HTML. for mobile devices. They should have a version built for <laughs> crummy bandwidth. Low, low <laughs> bandwidth. I mean, these websites are beautiful, though, but I just can't read it right now. But, um, yeah. But yeah, people in the chat said that ONC is currently diving right now. So, cool. Who are they out with, does it say? Yeah. I'm sorry, can you repeat that? Who are the, who's the ROV? That they're, what ROV are they working with, does it say? I think they said R-O-P-O-S. Ropos? Ropos. Oh, they're out with Ropos right now? Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Interesting. So I believe Hokulea is on what they call their Alaska Heritage Sale. Um, man, it's really hard for me to find more information in a condensed way with this bandwidth. Um, but basically just another really cool expedition focusing on Polynesian groups and other indigenous groups and their navigation hmm. that you can tune in with online, I think. I can't quite see, but it looks like they have some sort of way to track their movements. So. I believe it's live <laughs> on Twitter. Let me check. Oh, okay. <laughs> Twitter. Oh. What are your plans for the rest of the summer, Sarah? <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm job searching, maybe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let the world know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I mean, I'm kind of. <laughs> She's mentioned it multiple times. <laughs> I'm all right with it, though. Um, yeah. Just so I'm taking a gap year bet um, between, you know, my undergrad and likely my master's. If I'm, if I really feel like I want to do it, just go straight to a PhD. Mm -hmm. Um, but I just need some time to figure out what I want to do specifically and what programs I like, um, yeah. you know, what type of lab setting I want to be in, that sort of thing. So I'm just going to be living in Philly, um, finding some way to make rent, <laughs> most likely <laughs> restaurant industry, but some career focused job would be nice. So maybe I'll look into some, you know, park systems, maybe John Hines is real close by, Nice. maybe something within maybe looking into the sustainability department in Philly. Um, yeah, just seeing where I can fit in really for a, a year or so. Cool. Yeah. But How about you, Daniel? Back to the Utah? Uh, no, my season was up in Utah, but I'm pretty much in the same boat as Sarah. Um, I'm looking at other park positions for the fall, 
but for the summer, I'm looking to spend some time at home and also be looking for work that's either career focused or something to help me make money. Yeah, good luck but with so far, I've uh, applied to places like um, there is a dinosaur park nearby in Maryland, oh. so I can be like a part-time paleontologist. What's Ari. it? What's it called? It's literally called Dinosaur Park. Wow. In Coral, <laughs> so yeah, Love there's it. a lot of late Cretaceous uh, dinosaur fossils out there that they're they found uh, like a decade ago. So oh, yeah. they're looking for some help on that. Oh, Wait, cool. is this the one where it was like a giant lake bed, and then a bunch because of the drought and different times at that dinosaur time, like they all the, the dinosaurs went there, and then they like got stuck in the mud and. A bunch of them died there. Mm. <laughs> I think it is. I think so it is. So they're like just this massive Where is wall it located? condensed uh, yeah. scalp fossils. Got a little wiggly on screen. It's in Laurel, Maryland. Oh, really? Mm. Yeah. Oh, well, I think the one I'm thinking of is Arizona, Utah, so I'll look that up and send it to you. Yeah. <laughs> but I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I've heard about that. And uh, yeah, I used to be a paleo volunteer at the Grand Staircase Escalante National Monument in Ooh. southern Utah. And that was really fun to work in a government lab with their um, dinosaur specimens. And I was mostly lurking on hadrosaur um, fossils, which uh, hadrosaurs are these large plant-eating dinosaurs. And they're almost like uh, herd animals. You just find bones of them everywhere because they come in so many numbers. But uh, it was really fun to watch people take out um, jackets full of like dinosaur skulls. like a huge T-Rex skull that we we're looking at. Wow. It was oh. massive, and yet it was so big can and delicate. Me, can you give me like a scale? So. Like something for reference or no? It's like, so from the edge of this desk to like where your laptop is, Whoa. up to the top of this monitor. Whoa. Wow. That's it's huge. Big. And it was only one person can work on it at a time because it's so delicate. Wow. So mm. it takes quite a while to <laughs> go through those collections sometimes. Yeah. And then when you think about it, you're seeing just, you're seeing the bone. Or yeah, you're not seeing bone, all the flesh. You're not seeing the flesh. And like, mm -hmm. who knows how big, even more big. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's so, it's quite the experience of actually just literally just sitting there digging and unearthing Squid. things. It sounds repetitive, but it's, it's like what we do here. It's a discovery process. Mm -hmm. Sounds so, exciting. Yeah. yeah. Nice. But yeah, I'm also taking a gap year as well um, between undergrad and grad school. So for those of you at home who are watching us live, you know, if you're looking for um, opportunities in between undergrad and grad that uh, give you lots of field experience as Ooh, well as we real world experience, Ooh. and you get to travel to huh. see the world, uh, consider joining the Nautilus team. On our yeah. website, we have links to uh, joining our team as well as science and tech. We are looking for people of all uh, skills and backgrounds, ranging from uh, scientists, engineers, science communicators, as well as artists, and mm -hmm. people to be um, on our crew working on the ship. So if you're interested, uh, check out those opportunities. Yeah. Yep, Nautilus is definitely cementing my want to mm -hmm. be back. Go to see more? Go, yeah, mm -hmm. be back right. to see. To Same for it. me. Mm -hmm. Great experience here. And we know what Loopy's doing this summer. Yeah. Coming to yes. University of Rhode Island. Yes, I will be. I am. It's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be gone <laughs> all summer. Um, yes, after this, I will be going to Rhode Island. Um, to conduct research there. Uh, we haven't decided yet on the project, but uh, yeah, so I'll be there for another month. <laughs> um, and then after Rhode Island, I will go to Mississippi and um, I'll be there for another month. And that'll be like my last stop um, where I'll pretty much uh, get with all the other interns. Um, Is that at USM? University of Southern Mississippi? Yes, or, yeah. it's going to be at the University of Southern Mississippi. Um, so yeah, I'll get with all mm -hmm. the other interns and we'll present Mississippi, what yeah. we did over the <laughs> summer. Great. And kind of network and everything and 
yeah, then that'll be the end of my internship. I'll go home, and by the time I get home, I'll probably yeah. just start packing to go back to school <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to finish out my last year uh, at Tuskegee University. Yeah, senior. Yes, I'm so excited. And we're really <laughs> we'll be in the big leagues. Yes. We're really upsetting some squid here. It looks like keep getting inked. <laughs> it's crazy because like today I got my memories where I just graduated high school like four Aww. years ago, and I'm about Aww. to go my senior year of college. It's so yeah, fast. It's, yeah, it's a very surreal experience. <laughs> My brother sent me a picture of uh, my high school graduation a few days ago. And that was like five years ago for me. Saying that <laughs> makes me feel old. But it's like, wow, I'm thinking about the journey from there to now. It's, you know, yeah, pretty um, proud of uh, where I've come so far. So, yeah. So you guys, all three of you, went through um, the the pan undergraduate with the pandemic, huh? Yes. Oh, yes. yes. <laughs> so, wow, that must it have been was smack dab in the middle of a lot of, Zoom, a lot of Zoom classes. And yes. Uh, yes. What a bummer. Organic chemistry on Zoom. Yeah. <laughs> any chemistry, any chemistry on Zoom is tough. I don't know how you did that one because yeah. so much of the, the understanding, for particularly <laughs> it was comes from the lab work. It yeah. was tough. I was fortunate in that I was in like an honor section for Orgo 2 and we got to you know, do the lab portion of it, but man, it was, that was a really fun, <laughs> interesting time to be sitting in your room yeah. for oh. each <laughs> and every class. Yeah, it was literally just getting out of bed, going to your desk, and get back into bed. <laughs> oh, Taking, go Taking my finals at home, that was <laughs> real. Um, I actually, a uh, uh, fun, Kind of not so fun for me, but um, I explicitly told my mother that I was taking a final at a certain time. And guess what she decided to do when I was taking that final? Um, the Back room you. next, <laughs> the room next to my room is a bathroom, like a full bathroom. And she decided that my cat needed a bath. Oh, jeez. <laughs> no way. During, During my organic <laughs> chemistry <laughs> final. Oh, great. <laughs> That's like a freaking comedy so, scene. <laughs> I know. I, um, yeah, needless to say, I didn't do as well on the final as I, I think I could have, but it worked out okay. <laughs> but wow. um, Zoom University was an interesting time. Zoom. I definitely yeah, feel. Yeah, Zoom <laughs> University was crazy. I feel like I can take on a lot now. <laughs> yeah, I am. Um, it wasn't so bad for being like high school for me because it was my senior year. So they actually like, um, when it came to like the second term or so, they were like, "Oh, well, whatever you have in class now, like you're done." For, like seniors, unless you like had a bad grade, then you have to like continue out the rest of the school year. So I was like, I finished early, yeah, <laughs> yeah. especially because physics was already like it was starting to look like it was about to go downhill. <laughs> so I was like, I had a B, and they were like, that's it. I was it's like, really I'm taking convenient. it, I'm running with it, <laughs> never Perfect. seeing it yeah. again. Super convenient. Um, and then our graduation was split into two groups. Oh, OK. Um, which I was sort of kind of, I didn't like that, because I was like, you know, like it didn't feel the same of graduating with all your class and stuff. Um, so it's like you have to attend two separate graduations. It's like one to go see your friends graduate before you, and then the yeah. second one you're actually graduating. I did like it though because I am a Z. Wait until college graduation. So, oh, it's a I'm, whole week. I'm dreading it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dreading it honestly because I am a Zapata. I am a Z. I'm <laughs> at the end. <laughs> well, the way the way mine worked, it wasn't alphabetical. Um, they just kind of had you sit. Like wherever you were in like a line and mm -hmm. wherever you ended up in the rows is when you got called out for mine, but could be different mm -hmm. depending oh, on your institution. I yeah. Know. I've been kind of watching some of Tuskegee's, I watched their, some of their graduations this year and I think it's more so they do it by like the department you're in. Yeah. Mine was by, um, so yeah, department, right? Which is biology, which is the largest, I think the largest department at Temple. <laughs> oh, oh, fish. Hello. So Hank swimming with us. Look at huh. that. Oh. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I tried, to, oh, I tried to show y'all a little something, and it just didn't work. <laughs> Looks like some sort of rafin fish. I don't know what, though. I'm not, I'm not an expert in fish. But yeah, freshman year of college, it was, it was like a ghost town on that campus. <laughs> huh. oh. So did they delay? 
the start of university and during the pandemic. There it is, he's back. Oh. oh. Not for just Geeky, we still started on time. It was just more so um, on campus. It really was like mainly like just freshmen, I would say. Like it wasn't any like some students were on campus, but like upperclassmen, but it was mainly, I feel like just like freshmen. Okay, interesting. Um, just a quick question. Is there any way that we could tell Atalanta's camera like a little, little bit down or no? Just to see more of what's sure. in the light. The fish keep coming back. Tilt them down. Beautiful. But yeah, I think oh, some universities probably delayed oh, yeah. for Ooh. COVID, but not not Tuskegee. Some sort of iridescent something. Just tilt it up as we get. Yeah, that's perfect. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I mostly stayed on uh, campus during COVID, and I had an apartment. And oh. Big so What is? For. Ooh, oh, a teen four. Look at the teens. The that's rose, cool. the comb jellies. Oh, wow. Some of my favorite organisms are tinafores. And it's gone. And they just snake through the water. They're just darting back and forth. Yeah, they, they also use jet propulsion to get everywhere. And they use those comb rows for locomotion as well. Mm -hmm. Lots of stuff going on here. Yeah. 540-ish meters from surface. So what part of the ocean is this? What is it called? <laughs> well, it is the... the uh, getting so, yes. towards the <laughs> mesophotic, not quite Yes. Yet. I want to say abyssopelagic. Wow. Let me check myself, though. Nope, not this one. Oh, not even close. <laughs> Yeah, mesopelagic, sorry. Right. Bath heap is a little deeper. Yep. Too, yeah. Oh, and that could have been a some sort of sea cucumber maybe, but not sure. Bit too far away to tell. But yeah. Coming up can be as fun as looking at stuff sometimes because I know um, when we were coming down, when we were descending, um, they, the crew was, well, the watch, the I think it was the four to eight watch was mentioning that once they got to a certain point, once they got to like, I think 300 meters depth or something, they just got to like a huge boundary and like layer of gelatinous organisms probably undergoing dial uh, vertical migration and what that is is basically dial vertical migration or DVM is just when all of the um, pelagic organisms that like to be in the water column, they move up and down based on the time of day to, um, there's a bunch of different hypotheses as to why, but I think mainly it's for predation, to avoid predation and to avoid the harsh UV rays. So in the daytime, they're a bit lower and then at nighttime, they like to ascend a bit. Oh, some sort of fish mm. in Atalanta cam. But just like a huge layer of jelly stuff, which is totally possible here, but we'll see. And maybe we'll get some sharks, maybe when we're at the surface. So I have a joke for you. Mm -hmm. What's an Adarian's favorite sandwich? Give me a minute. I'm thinking. I don't know. You ready? Peanut butter and jelly fish. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> Just trying to think about like the, ooh. What is that, Natalanta Kim? And it's gone. I feel like that would not be a good sandwich. No, I don't think so. I don't want to, I mean, okay, wait, jellyfish are, or, well, jellies, they're not really fish. I guess that's kind of the same as like a, a starfish argument. Um, jellies are eaten in some cuisines. I've never had it, but I know it's a thing. 
I feel like you just slurp it like it's an oyster instead of using a fork and knife to cut it. <laughs> I just deep fry it. Yeah. <laughs> it tastes like chicken. <laughs> deep fried jellyfish. I still stand on the only seafood I probably eat. It's like crab legs, shrimp, <laughs> and then fish. You're not a seafood fan? Not really. I'm more... <laughs> when I tell y'all I'm basic, <laughs> the can be, I'm a type of person, I get chicken tenders wherever I go. <laughs> so I don't expand. I would say oh. this year I have really been like trying to expand my variety Yay. and stuff, but it's still just like the chicken tenders be calling my name. Like, <laughs> I just go back. <laughs> Yeah, so there's a certain type of jellyfish that is popular in East and Southeast Asian countries. And you can eat them, I think, raw. They just have to be prepared a certain way. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah. I would try it once, no, for thanks. sure. I would no, try it once. Thanks. Just like everything else. <laughs> Protein. <laughs> Well, actually, no, they're not. It says, not according, much protein. according to Wikipedia, <laughs> which is according to some source that I'm not sure of, it says, desalted, ready-to-use jellyfish are low in calories and contain hardly any fat, or about 5% protein and 95% water, which makes sense. Huh. But desalted. Mm. I was just going to say they're probably really salty, but <laughs> I guess they desalt them. <laughs> Soak them, maybe. Yeah, freshwater bath. I will say I've had sushi before, but it had to be cooked. Oh. Uh, I, oh. I don't eat raw sushi. That's not, I, I can't eat it. Okay. <laughs> You're growing. But yeah, I did. I tried cooked sushi. It was like shrimp or so, like a spicy yeah. tuna roll maybe or something. Mm -hmm. um, with eel sauce. Eel sauce is really good. Mm -hmm. I did not think I was going to like it, but I love yeah. it. Eels. <laughs> <laughs> Eels just always made me think, it's just a worm with fins. <laughs> <laughs> Unagi. Yeah. So, yep, we are about 427 meters to the surface. Coming up fast. Yep, and around 100 or 50 meters or so, we'll... Uh, conclude our SPL for the day as we hand it over to the ROV team to help with the ascent. So if you have any questions, last minute questions or curiosities, feel free to put them in the chat and we'll be here to talk to you. Something else on the Herc cam. I don't know what that is. Kind of looks like a Tina 4 I think actually. And it's gone. Uh, don't know. Yeah, the jellyfish that are eaten as food are pretty distant from tinafores, so yeah. whatever other uh, tinafores that we eat, probably have to invent a whole new field of cuisine right. in order to cook them. Yep. I guess it won't be as, as simple as just throwing them in a pan of butter and, you know, no. eating it that way. No. <laughs> Can't quite do that with many things, though, can you? Well, I yeah. guess you could do that with seafood. I feel like on one hand, it's interesting to see how you can cook something that seems like oh. so bizarre to eat. But at the same time, putting in that much effort to eat something... I wonder if it's worth it. I'm just really hungry. <laughs> I mean, hey, <laughs> when you make something out of the labor of love, it's usually pretty good. Yeah. Chef, that's another thing I would have uh, considered as a career path. I like yeah. cooking. Yeah, but then you cook all day, and then when you get home, it's like you, why, like you don't feel like cooking for yourself, you know? Yeah. It's like food doesn't matter at that point. But I like cooking for other people, too, mm -hmm. when they like it. I don't like people criticizing me. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I like eating. <laughs> yeah. Me too. I, like too. <laughs> I actually like cooking as well. It's yeah. nice to get creative. In the it is nice. I just, I just Although, don't have the time to cook, but yeah, I will fair. make time to eat for sure. Real. My, one of the best things I've ever invested in is an instant pot. Yes. You just throw everything in, you leave it, you come Easy. back, it's done. Yep. Yes. Love it. I used to do that in college all the time. My mom bought me one for Christmas, and uh, I would just, my favorite thing to make was chili. Start the ship going forward mm. at point three. I love making it's chili. It's already going forward at point three. Looks like we're mm. potentially seeing, I want to say they could be larvae sea in houses. Um, but I don't know. All these like gelatinous things. And larvaceans are tunicates. Um, yeah. So, so for those of you who are just tuning in, welcome aboard the exploration vessel Nautilus. We are currently ascending from a dive exploring an unnamed geo right outside the Pacific Remote Islands Marine National Monument. It will be up to the top in less than an hour or so. Or very soon. Oh yeah, in the very, very soon. 20 minutes, 15 minutes. Yep. And so we'll have a dive planned for later on tonight at 12 a.m. Hawaii time. So if you missed this dive or you're looking forward to another one, you can catch us around that. Woohoo! Yeah. Back off. Haven't seen too many people out on deck. I'm look oh, they're set up. <laughs> I guess. Do you see the face? Yeah, now the tongue's hanging out again. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, so looks like we're seeing a whole lot of mucus structures around here. Um, so these big blobby things, if they are larvae in houses, um, basically tunicates just make a big mucus house where they capture a bunch of detritus and marine snow. And that's how they eat. but it would make sense as we are getting closer to the photic zone. We're just on that boundary. So a lot of these are probably descending for the day, maybe. Hmm. Or maybe we're ascending and they are descending. That's what I meant. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they do a vertical migration though, right? Yep. Yeah. This was an exam question in my marine ecology class, so I'd like to say it's one of the things I know about the pelagic zone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, was, uh, vertical migration is actually an interesting uh, ecological phenomenon. And it's, uh, scientists are s speculate that it's a vertical migration is one of the earliest uh, behaviors in microorganisms in the early Earth. So they were different species of like cyanobacteria that existed at uh, different photo zones in the ocean and they would migrate at different times of the day. And they had different colors of like um, chlorophyll. So you had some that were like green, others that were purple and red, that absorbed different wavelengths of light and reflect others. So the oceans could have been very different colors billions of years ago when the oceans were just full of life. Simple life, but... Yeah. yeah. Yep. Not too many, we haven't seen too many siphonophores 
sad face. But who knows? And I mean, if we see oceanic white tips when we come up, I think that's just a, a win. Well, shark. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, yeah. That would be great for Paula's birthday. You know, it's another thing I hope we can manifest one out here. What? You probably know about this. Uh, I'm trying to make sure I spell it right. That's a Siphon of Four on Atalantacam that we just passed. It was really long. It's gone now, but. Yeah, I missed it. You blink and you miss it. Yeah, it was like in the <laughs> lower right corner. I just saw it out of the corner of my eye. Right when I said there weren't any. Say something else. <laughs> I mean, we, we just said whale shark. Say there's not a whale shark, and then maybe it'll appear. There isn't a whale shark right now, you're right, so... Mm. <laughs> a whale shark? <laughs> maybe a magna penis squid? That would be cool. Oh, well, it's a bit too... I think it's a bit too shallow for that right now, but yeah, that would be epic. They look like aliens, but they're not. They're actually just a species of squid with very long tentacles. Really long tentacles. Mm. Only found a couple times. Well, actually, I want to say, like, actually, I don't know. We saw one recently. What? Yeah, well, in our... Did we? Yeah, in just our mobilization time, but yeah. Oh. Look at all the jelly stuff. <coughs> Some sort of shrimp on Herc's cam. Really, really, a lot of marine snow here. Very productive waters, looks like. Nav, could you ask Deck if he's looking for help? Could you ask the Deck if he needs help? Okay, thanks. Hey, I get to sit in the control van for Rico. <laughs> Can't without my deck skills that I just learned, thank to Sarah. <laughs> someday, someday you'll see me hauling up that ROV. Mm -hmm. Did anyone practice their knots last night? No. Not last no. night. Not but last night. Practice what? For this morning. I guess it's all a blur. <laughs> oh, hey. yeah. I was asleep during that whole night. <laughs> <laughs> I think I remember We'll get them to do it again in the afternoon. <laughs> I would say, yeah. I was, I was wondering why Coralie was carrying, like, a rope around <laughs> the other day. <laughs> I was like, why is there a we rope? We can teach you the basic ones. So, Dwight, I have an important question. Okay. Do you watch The Office, and it's your favorite character, <laughs> Dwight? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> um, My God. No, I, I, I mean, I've seen, I've seen The Office before, of course, but I don't, <laughs> I, I, I didn't binge it or anything like oh, that. Jelly. Oh, wow. wow. But, uh, yeah, I kind of <laughs> like his character. He's a little weird. Yeah. <laughs> My favorite but funny. is the CPR episode. And I think in my health class in um, high school, they showed us the CPR episode clip um, huh? to like, teach us how to <laughs> do CPR. CPR. And it was like, this is the what not to do. <laughs> <laughs> and they showed us that. Hello, Clarice. That part. <laughs> I love that one. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember seeing a Magda Pinna on our expedition at least. Were you? Did you say that? Wait, that would be a definite mm. highlight, but I'm sure Nautilus has seen it at some point. Oh, it was during our, uh, kind of our testing period before the season started. Oh, wait, really? Yeah. Oh, I see. So it wasn't streamed. That's awesome. Hmm.
We're at about 190 meters, so close, very close. Another jelly. So fast, probably so confused. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes I wonder how many things get accidentally shredded in the thrusters. Plenty. Oh yeah. We've, uh, <laughs> we've made uh, absolute carnage. Calamari rings before, I think. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that many. Yeah. But it happens. Ooh. I don't know what that is. Pretty we went through like a. Just a, just like field of all these like red jellyfish out with Ocean Networks Canada one time, and oh. everybody was like, "Ooh, ah!" Uh, and they're all like, "Go!" <laughs> like and it's probably five minutes, right? Uh. And just like, "Oh, so this is amazing! This is amazing!" And then they're like, shredded. "Turn around and go through it and oh, go God. see them again." And it's just <laughs> like, "No, I don't yeah. think so. <laughs> it doesn't look the same anymore." <laughs> <laughs> Looks good once. I think I see a tentacle. <laughs> Man. Yeah, oftentimes we we are doing mm. some pretty destructive sampling, mm. but we try <laughs> to limit our sampling to things that we've seen many times. Um, and we try to limit how much we take. Well, so I don't mean, worry. Compare it to trawls and <laughs> oh, grabs yeah. and stuff, right? That's, yep. you know, those are some alternatives. Like. Yep. We're not even close to that level of decimation. Surgi surgical sampling. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, we do go in and do little haircuts. Uh, yeah. You know, <laughs> that's, haircuts. that's a big difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder what type of cake they're going to bring out for Paula. You better have candles. No, that's a bad idea on a boat. trying to think of something to fill the air or fill the water I guess I should say yeah uh, I actually have a question that just came in oh okay so how many known species are thought to live in the earth's oceans oh. then there are around 230,000 known species living in the oceans but most of it's unexplored so the total number could be higher do we have any uh, educated estimates on what that number could be um, oh gosh, uh, something, something, species, saturation, curve, something a lot more. I think, um, from what I can remember, I want to say like a million or something. Um, it's definitely a big number. Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot. Um, let me see. And that's just like species on their own, maybe just, in, you know, the animal kingdom, but that's not even counting all the uh, other microorganisms like <coughs> well, bacteria, the all sorts of eukaryotes, you can do it at 50 prokaryotes. Or, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I, I'm not gonna lie, I have no idea, over. but a lot. <laughs> yeah. A lot. Species saturation curves are a predictor of how many species we know about. Um, Basically, the curve is like number of species over time, essentially, and like when you, like number of new species over time. So once that curve starts to flatten out, you can kind of tell when there's not much more to find. Um, and I want to say the 
the curve is a curve and it's not really kind of flattening out for um, marine species at least, but I can't quite remember. Yeah. Would you but say, I know there's a lot. Would you say it's a logarithmic curve or is it something different? Um, I think so if I remember what a logarithmic curve looks like. Yeah, it's sort of like... Kind of like our dive yes. track. Yes, yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like the inverse of exponential. Correct, almost. correct, yep. Yep. But yeah, that's why it's so important that we look at the deep sea because um, even when we look at a coral and we're like, oh, that's that coral. We don't really know if it's that specific species. Um, there's a lot of cryptic species, AKA species that look like each other, but they're genetically very different. And um, yeah, it's really important for understanding the biodiversity of sea floor. So that's why phylogenetics are, ooh, we have some fish in Atalanta camp. Ooh. Fishy fishies. Yeah. Hello. We go. Look at this school. Ooh, we got a lot. Um, but yeah, that's why phylogenetics are a big, important field for the deep sea, especially. A big reason why it's important to take eDNA samples on our ROVs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And did you know that throughout Earth's history, we haven't just had supercontinents like Pangaea, but also super oceans. And at one point, uh, Pangaea Stop was surrounded there. by the super ocean. Stop at 50, yeah. Panthalassia. Yeah, four more to go. All right. And now I think we're at about 50 meters. So yep, that's we're 50. likely, yeah, we're likely uh, going to be... Signing off soon. Yeah, let them know we're clear to come up. Yep. So we're going to hand we over the um, SPL uh, to the RVs. We are all stopped on the winch at 50 meters and handing it over Thank to you. Thank you guys for joining with us. And Roger you can that. watch us in Brace the data lab. Yeah. Um, process on the samples. Yeah. 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 Ye
Roger. Van deck, have eyes on Herc, lining up perfectly between the both of us. Nice job. Go. Okay, They have pretty massive pectoral fins, don't they? Yeah. Like airplane wings. Bridge control van. Okay. We reduce thrust to 25%. Slurp on the loose. Yeah, huh? Bridge control van. Okay. Can we increase thrust to 90% and track a line forward at 0 0.1 knots? Okay, Roger, doing. 